annoying missing arrows in this picture. So there were things that seemed like should be possible to construct from one-way functions, and most of the picture had been completed in, in the late 80s and early 90s, but this was something that was kind of standing out as not known. And we had a very complicated construction of these things from one-way functions. Um, and we were so unsatisfied with it that we really forced us to look for a, uh, the right abstraction to find a simpler construction. That led to this notion of inaccessible entropy that I'll talk about. And what we were trying to do there was make this construction at least as simple as the Hassel et al. work, but it turned out that the, um, the ideas from there inspired kind of simplifying things on the other side of the picture as well. Anyway, so let me say a little bit about one, just on one slide, what is inaccessible entropy by example. Suppose I have what's called a collision resistant hash function. So that's a function that's um, shrinking. So you say it takes n bits to some say n minus k bits. Okay. Um, uh, and it has the property that even though it's, sh so it's, it's shrinking, so there must be lots of inputs that collide. And what collision resistance means, even though there are lots of inputs that collide with each other, it's hard to find any collisions. Okay, technically, H should be chosen from a family of functions that are shrinking, and given a random function from the family, it's infeasible to, to produce a collision in it. All right, so suppose I have, just let's imagine it's a fixed collision resistant hash function. I choose an input uniformly at random. And now let's look at the entropy of X given H of X. Well, that must be at least K because X had N bits of entropy, it was N random bits, and I've conditioned on something that's, I've revealed only N minus K bits of information about it the output of the hash function. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if I consider any efficient algorithm that generates h of x, some output value of the hash function, once, once it generates h of x, its hands are tied to a particular value of x. It, can only, it can't produce any value other than x, um, other, other than a single value x that whose output is h of x, even though there are many of them. Okay, so intuitively, given h of x, x has a lot of entropy in the Sh Shannon entropy, but it's somehow inaccessible. No efficient algorithm can, can generate lots of random x's that map to h of x. Okay, and so one interesting thing, so this can be formalized into some notion, other computational notion of entropy, which we call inaccessible entropy. And the um, interesting thing here is that this seems dual to the notion of pseudo-entropy that I talked about. In particular, in this example, and when this notion is interesting, is when the computational form of entropy, this accessible entropy, is smaller, much smaller than the real entropy. Okay, and one can generalize, come up with some general notion, which we maybe should now call next bit accessible entropy. And what we can prove is that if f is a one-way function, I look at a very similar construction as before. So I look at f of x and then x, except with the difference that I break f of x into bits, and then I don't need to break x into bits, that this thing has this next bit accessible entropy uh, smaller than its real entropy, n minus something super logarithmic in n. So this, not only the notion seems dual, the construction seems very dual to the, the other one that we had. What? Yes, um, uh, yes, we're thinking of x as picked at random. When, now, when an, now when you think of an adversary here, so th that, that's weaker than the, the definition of collision resistance. Um, um, so an adversary need not generate things at random, and that somehow has to come into the definition, which I'm not giving formally. Okay, so to conclude, um, sort of the overall message that seems to be emerging is that complexity-based cryptography is, is possible because of gaps between real, that is information theoretic entropy, and computational entropy. And um, depending on what crypt type of cryptographic primitive you're interested in, the notion of computational entropy may be different and the relationship to the real entropy may be different. And in particular, secrecy in cryptography roughly seems to correspond to having pseudo-entropy larger than, than Shannon entropy. And these sort of unforgeability type primitives seem to, be, seem to correspond to having accessible entropy smaller than the real entropy. Uh, 
Um, and uh, all right, so in terms of some things that, that there's left to do in the future here, so one, I mentioned there this seems to be this duality and analogy between inaccessible entropy and pseudo entropy. Um, and, but we don't know a formal way to say that yet. Right now it's, it's more intuition. Okay, so can one formally connect the two? Uh, this question I mentioned earlier, all right, can one get a really efficient um, construction of pseudorandom generators from, from one-way functions? I mean, one that has hope of, of being practical. We, we don't know right now. My current guess is, uh, is negative, but uh, it, you know, it changes from, from time to time. Um, and uh, this notion of inaccessible entropy, pseudo-entropy has found connections with uh, and use in other places in complexity theory and actually there are, um, can be related to notions being used in additive combinatorics and other areas of pure mathematics. And one may wonder whether this inaccessible entropy notion has useful applications or analogies um, as well in other areas. Okay, so there is a uh, good, good uh, uh, question. So there, um, it is possible to do things less asymptotically than I have done, and uh, what's called concrete security in cryptography, and where you fix a model computation, say Boolean circuits or something, and you really kind of reason about sort of concrete numbers, and you can even you know get rid of the big O's and everything, and say for a fixed value of n, what's it's happening? Ugly. What? It's just ugly. It is. Little, it is more painful. Um, these things, I think, are still very far from having reasonable. The things I'm talking about having reasonable statements in the in the concrete sense. But other things in cryptography have been optimized 
um, to give quite reasonable things in concrete security. And I think even uh, constructing pseudorandom generators from one, what are called one-way permutations, so these are you know, one to one and on to uh, one-way functions. Uh, Johan Hastad uh, and someone else did a concrete security analysis of that that was not unreasonable. Uh, it, it, uh, so then, I mean, this, this it does make sense for non-uniform security, which seems to be what we're. There is a way of making sense of the definitions for non-uniform security. So uh, it should be possible to formulate. Um, but as far as the other questions, so still what I was talking about are still uh, uh, referring to you know general models of computation like Boolean circuits, not kind of going into some some kind of class of statistical tests you really can get your hands on. Okay, I'll ask one more philosophical question. So, um, do you think function is really kind of a lock model for these dysfunctions, or is there even a similar primitive flow on the function to apply a lot So, how do you think you want to get rid of the function? It's a, it's a, so, so, um, there is, a, so it, it is known that all these things imply one way functions. And that's sometimes said to say, well, that means one way functions are minimal. But that's not really a completely satisfactory answer because, you know, all these things are equivalent, so why not take one of the more complicated ones and claim that that's a sort of minimal assumption? Oh, no, there's an easier assumption, right? Just assume that you just like, you have a plan. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. So below one way functions. Right. Of your so there is a, yes, yeah, so there is a, there's a, this, a uh, very interesting question of how you can relate now the assumption of one-way functions to uh, things like the p versus np question, things in between the p versus np and one-way functions like the, whether np has problems that are higher than average. And uh, people have certainly thought a lot about that. There are mostly, mostly uh, negative results saying that with the following kind of uh, restricting yourself to certain kinds of black box reduction with black box construction which you know, like, like uh, Luca's work with uh, Andre Bogdanov. Um, but certainly not everything is ruled out there, so conceivably something needs to be done. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I have a